question. You and Canelo, are we going to see this? Yeah, what's your uh, message to Canelo? I don't know. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we can get that fight. You know, uh, if not, then, hey, we move on to the next. Terrence Crawford breaks his silence on the fight everyone's been buzzing about, Canelo Alvarez. In an exclusive moment, captured right after Joshua and Dubois battled it out, Crawford leaves the door wide open for a clash of champions. Is boxing's next mega fight finally taking shape? Crawford's hope could be the spark that ignites it all. Rob Acosta, the strength and conditioning coach with insider experience, weighed in on the potential showdown between Canelo Alvarez and Terrence Crawford. His perspective offers a balanced view on the matchup, reflecting on both fighters' recent performances. Based off Canelo's recent performances and based on Crawford's recent performance, that fight might go to the scorecards. I don't think no one get knocked out in that fight because Canelo's kind of on a decline, even though Crawford's smaller. In these opening thoughts, Acosta is clear that a knockout may not be in the cards, despite Canelo's history of finishing opponents. What's striking here is his mention of Canelo's slight decline, a suggestion that he might not be as invincible as he once seemed. At the same time, Acosta points out that while Crawford is physically smaller, size alone won't be the deciding factor, given his skill set and sharp instincts inside the ring. Crawford has a lot of edge to him. Like, he, he, he has good skill, he got good IQ, he's rangy, he knows how to put his punches together. Canelo is just, he's just a different animal. But if somebody boxes, I could see Canelo struggling a little bit. So I don't know how that... I think I still give it to Canelo, but for my opinion changing from him sleeping Crawford to winning by decision, I will go towards the decision based on both performances. Acosta paints a picture of a chess match between two tactical minds rather than a one-sided affair. Despite recognizing Canelo's unique qualities as a different animal, he emphasizes that Crawford's intelligence, reach, and ability to combine punches could challenge Canelo more than anticipated. The subtle shift in his opinion, from expecting a knockout to envisioning a decision, demonstrates how both fighters' recent performances have reshaped the narrative for this fight. Even you know, he's strong, he's a tough, you know what I'm saying? But then now we gotta go up to 168? Like, what if, come on, bro, what are we talking about? Acosta reminds us that moving up to 168 pounds is no easy feat. Crawford may have carried his power well in previous fights, but 168 presents a whole new level of difficulty. In the world of boxing, opinions often differ, and when it comes to the idea of Terence Crawford moving up to face Canelo Alvarez, there are strong voices on both sides of the debate. While some believe Crawford's skill and ring IQ can carry him through, others argue that the weight difference might simply be too much to overcome. One such perspective comes from Johnny Ortiz, who sees the fight from a more pragmatic lens, focusing on the natural advantages Canelo brings to the table. Um, to me, it's just weight classes, I think. Canelo's just naturally too strong. I don't see Terrence Crawford going to 168, and I don't see Terrence, I don't see Terrence Crawford having the leverage to make Canelo come down and make him in the catch weight. I think Canelo got all leverage, so um, all the advantages to Canelo. So I think that's just really a big payday for Terrence Crawford. That's all he's looking at. Ortiz sees Canelo's strength and leverage as overwhelming factors, making it tough for Crawford to force a catch weight. To Ortiz, this fight looks more like a payday for Crawford than a balanced showdown. Renowned trainer Robert Garcia weighed in on Terence Crawford's next potential move, particularly a fight against Canelo Alvarez. While Garcia acknowledges Crawford's accomplishments, he questions whether Crawford truly needs to pursue the challenge. I think, uh, I think Terence Crawford is the fight that he's looking for. It's the biggest fight out there for him, and, and, and he's already accomplished. He's done so much in boxing that he doesn't need to challenge it over against nobody else. Uh, if it's a Canelo fight, then he'll take it because this, it's a huge, huge payday for him. Uh, and, if there, and if it's not, I don't think he'll fight again. I don't think he has to fight anymore. He's already accomplished so much. He's already secured himself very well. He's a smart man. Uh, he's not He's not spending his money crazy like other fighters do. He's uh, He lives a normal life. He's a family man. He's got his family, kids, everything. Takes care of everybody around him. Uh, he doesn't have to fight anymore. And if, but if it's Canelo, then he'll do it because it's, it's just a huge fight. Garcia highlights that Crawford has little left to prove in the sport, having achieved more than enough for his legacy. According to Garcia, a fight with Canelo would primarily be about the financial reward rather than any competitive necessity. However, when it comes to predicting the fight itself, Garcia Garcia's view becomes more tactical. I, I, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I probably don't see him winning, but I do see him putting up a good six, eight rounds. 
I do believe that. You think still can? I think he'll put up some good. I think he'll put up some good rounds. And do you mean six or eight rounds? Like yo, he won't finish, or that he from there can't and Canelo might take over. Yes, that can. I feel like after that, I think I see Canelo. I think Canelo taking over. But I think I think those first six, seven rounds, he's gonna he's gonna be very close. Or maybe he's gonna take him down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
stronger Canelo. For Lopez, this fight poses a risk not just of losing, but of accelerating Crawford's decline in the sport. The beef between Teofimo Lopez and Terence Crawford has sparked significant attention, with both sides trading barbs over the years. The origins of this tension are particularly intriguing, as detailed by Teofimo Lopez Sr., who provides insight into how their feud began. Wait, we'll book for for your son. Because my son called him out. Mm -hmm. As my son is walking, I didn't know this. So my son tells him, yo, when we're gonna fight? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> he told him some shit like that. So, so Crawford comes to me first and grabs my arm. He says, you know, gonna be ever like, like, you know, like he's talking to my ear. He's saying, you know, gonna touch me again. I'm gonna slap the shit out of you. So that I'm put my fuck off him and I say, slap me now, bitch. You bitch, slap me now. Let's do it now. Teofimo Lopez Sr.'s revelation sheds light on the personal dynamics fueling the rivalry. The initial callout by Lopez's son seemingly triggered Crawford's reaction, leading to escalating tensions that included threats. This backstory adds a layer of drama to the narrative, illustrating how personal conflicts can sometimes spill over into professional arenas, intensifying the stakes for all involved. The animosity between Teofimo Lopez Sr. and Terence Crawford has escalated into a harsh feud, with personal attacks and high-stakes challenges being thrown around. As tensions rise, Lopez Sr. has become increasingly vocal, making bold statements about Crawford's reluctance to fight his son and criticizing Crawford's intentions in the boxing world. Mm -hmm. And my son is willing to go to 154 to fight this bum. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to take the fight why yeah canelo's not gonna fight him canelo already told him you gotta fight to your female and then i'll think about fighting you mm. did canelo say that yeah yep the fuck is this guy gonna do for run the whole fucking, the whole fight until canelo yeah. knocks him out lopez senior's fiery comments reveal his frustration with crawford's unwillingness to take on his son and the broader boxing narrative by labeling crawford as a bum and criticizing his refusal to fight teofimo lopez senior intensifies the personal and professional animosity his outburst also touches on the broader issue of how top fighters including canelo alvarez are perceived to avoid certain matchups adding to the controversial discourse surrounding these high profile boxing rivalries we 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 are we are the future of boxing my son just turned 27 he became two-time on the speed of champion at 25 facts Crawford did it in what at 36 or 37 36 yeah 36 yeah mm -hmm. right that yeah yeah mother by emphasizing that Teofimo Lopez Jr. is already a two-time champion at a young age, Lopez Sr. contrasts this with Crawford's accomplishments at an older age. His remarks are a pointed critique of Crawford's perceived reluctance and age, underscoring his view that the Lopez family represents the future of boxing. The personal and derogatory language used by Lopez Sr. further fuels the ongoing feud, casting Crawford in a negative light and intensifying the rivalry between the two camps. Teofimo Lopez Sr.'s criticisms of Terence Crawford extend beyond personal grievances, touching on Crawford's potential future performances and career trajectory. But well, he's over here like, Ay, dame la pelea, Canelo. Oh, Lopez Sr.'s mockery reveals his skepticism about Crawford's ability to perform against elite competition like Canelo Alvarez. He predicts that Crawford will be exposed and outmatched, portraying the potential fight as a final desperate attempt to secure a big payday before his skills and career decline. This perspective underscores Lopez Sr.'s belief that Crawford's best days are behind him, and that a bout with Canelo would only highlight his shortcomings and hasten the end of his prominence in the sport. In response to the ongoing feud between Terence Crawford and Teofimo Lopez, boxing analyst Greg Hackett provides a candid perspective on the altercation and the broader issue in the sport today. His insights reflect a mix of frustration with the way modern boxing is handled and a critique of both fighters' behaviors. I mean, Tio, Tio got a, a taste of his own medicine. All that taunting and playing. All right, I got you. 
You know what I'm saying? Tio was like in the ring, but was like, nah, outside the ring. Like, yeah, he was letting him know that. Because that's the problem. That's the problem with boxing today. Back in the day, grown men didn't play with other grown men unless it was going to really be something. It's too much playing going on. And, and, and Buzz is like, bro, I don't be bothering y'all niggas. Like, I mean, stop saying my name. If, you know what I mean? If it ain't something that could really happen. Tio be on some clout chasing shit, be on some playing around shit. Now you want to be a part of the Reynoso team, like you Dicky, and, and I'm sorry for saying it like that, you know what I mean, but, because I don't really talk like that, but. Hackett suggests that Teofimo Lopez's confrontational and provocative behavior, which often includes taunting opponents, has now backfired on him. He points out that Crawford's response reflects a broader issue in boxing today. Too much playfulness and not enough seriousness. This shift in behavior has led to uncomfortable and potentially dangerous situations, as exemplified by their heated altercation. I mean, stop that, bro. Stop playing around. It could really... You know what I mean? You're going you're gonna to have something really happen to you. Like, really. And I ain't talking, when I talk like that, I ain't talking about shooting. I'm talking about you're going to get your ass beat. Like, kicked around, slammed around. And your dad, he ain't going to be able to do nothing about it because he's drunk. He better chill. You know what I'm saying? So, Tio got to start. He got to start using his head, falling back. Hackett's comments convey a strong message about the consequences of playing games and seeking attention in the boxing world. He warns that such behavior can lead to real repercussions, including physical confrontations. And he even tried to play with Bud in his last fight when Bud was leaving out the gate. He's, yo, like, playing, like, he played, like, Tia Fimo played too much. Like, you know what I'm saying? And you know where that come from? Top rank. They really got him on it, acting like a clown. Back when he was doing the dances and all that, you know, flip and all that, he, you start taking that outside the ring and now you try to play with grown men. You got to chill. Somebody, what happens to professionals and what happens with people when they start making money, they, 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 they stop, they start to forget that you can get f***ed up. It's, it, people will f*** you up. You know what I'm saying? So when people got money or when they got fame, they, they, they stop, they stop thinking about, oh, somebody will do something to me. No, somebody will definitely do something to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? They start to believe that they're untouchable. His critique extends to Teofimo Lopez Sr.'s involvement, suggesting that his actions and attitudes could exacerbate the situation rather than resolve it. As discussions heat up about a potential fight between Terrence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez, various boxing experts are weighing in on the matchup. Jim Lampley, a veteran commentator known for his keen insights, recently shared his concerns regarding Crawford's chances against the much larger Canelo. His analysis draws from Crawford's recent performances and the challenges he might face stepping up in weight. I love Terrence Crawford and I want him to have what he wants. Uh, but uh, off of what I saw tonight and what I saw in Los Angeles last month when Crawford uh, was fighting my dream off, I, you know, I am more than ever concerned that he's not big enough and uh, not big enough to be able to um, move around the ring and muscle Canelo in the way that he would have to to uh, ward off those really vicious inside power shots. Lampley worries that Crawford's size and strength may be insufficient to handle Canelo's power and physicality. This concern reflects broader doubts about whether Crawford can adjust to the increased weight class and deal with Canelo's formidable inside fighting skills. Do you think Terence Crawford can effectively adjust to the increased weight class and handle Canelo Alvarez's formidable inside fighting skills? Share your thoughts in the comments below.